Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here again with another episode of the Intro to Twine series. And in this episode, we're diving into arrays. When working in computer languages, you're going to be working with a lot of arrays. They are a, a data structure that is quite useful. Unfortunately, they're not too useful in Twine, at least not as far as I can see, especially with Harlow, with other store, story formats that may be a little bit different. But we're going to go through through them, and I'll show you what you can do with them and actually what you can't do with them. So what is an array? Well, I like to take things from an abstract point of view and compare it to reality. That way you can have a better idea of what I'm talking about versus talking about pure abstractions. Let's go to an idea of energy. How about, say, a solar panel? Solar panels, as you know, they're used extensively throughout the world. And when you get a solar panel at your house, they install it on your roof. Chances are you don't get just one solar panel. You get many solar panels. And what happens when you take lots and lots of solar panels and put them together? Say, like this. What do you call this? Do you call this solar panels? No, you don't. You call that an array of solar panels meaning a continuous, contiguous, I think that's the word, amount of solar panels in an unordered structure. But that's kind of what arrays are. They're a data structure that contains other items. Here, let's get a better example of this. I'm going to jump into this image here, and you can see this is what an array is. An array itself holds other variables. So you point a variable to an array, and then inside the array, it has what is known as indexes. And other variables store are stored at each index. So for instance, you may on the first index, you may want to store the word hello. The second index, you might want to store the value true. On the third index, you may want to store the value, say, 35. Wh whatever, whatever sort of variable you need, you can store in your arrays. In computer science, we we do this, but oftentimes we have specialized arrays, meaning our arrays are of only one type. Okay, what does that mean? In computer science, generally speaking, what we do is we'll create an array that will only store true or false values, or we'll only store text, or we'll only store numbers, and so forth. And that way, we don't get in trouble. Meaning, if you have an array of all mixed types, that is, strings, texts, true, false values, and so forth. Oftentimes you may not know exactly what type of variable you're pulling out of the array. For instance, imagine we had we had a string or what we know as text in the first index of the array, and we had a true false value in the second index of the array. What that would mean is we pull out the first index, we see this variable and we're like, oh great, we have text, awesome. You know, and then you go to the next index and you assume you have text. So you start doing operations on the text when in fact it's a true false value. And what happens when you do these operations on a different type? Well, your application crashes. It crashes big time and your users get very upset at that. That's why for safety, we, we tend to just use arrays of one type of variable. You'll also notice in this picture here, it starts at zero. So you can see this array has 10 elements in that. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. But it's counting at zero. This is, again, another computer science-ism, you can say. We always start counting arrays at zero. So this is the zero index, this is the one index. You don't have to worry about that at all in Twine. Twine says, OK, let's forget about that. Your first element is your first element. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's see an example of arrays now in Twine. So here we are. We're back at our derelict again. And I'm just going to walk you through some of the syntax of it. I'm going to do this in here. And the way we create a, an array is we set it to a variable, very much like we set everything to a variable. So I'm going to use the set macro, like so. And I'm going to give a name so we can just say greetings like so and then i'm going to put two set greetings two and now i'm going to create my array there are two ways to create an array you can type the array macro like so and this will return 
a, an empty array. So there's nothing being stored in it. Or you can just use the shortcut for A. I figure with Harlow being verbose in terms of a language, it's best to just spell it out. That way you can always know what's going on. There's You don't necessarily have to create it in that way. You can just put your your text in it like so. Now I've created an array that's being stored in greetings and it's it's has one element in it, which is in hello. I can add another array. For instance, now that I've created my array and I want to add other elements to it, I can use the set command again. And this time, the set macro, excuse me. And this time, what I'm going to do is combine arrays. I'm going to say greetings plus, so I'm setting greetings to greetings, and now I'm going to create another array, like so. And we'll say bonjour. Now this greetings is, this greetings is adding these two arrays together, and they're being stored in greetings, very much like you've seen before. Okay. The question is, how many elements are in the array? We have hello and we have bonjour. We can find this out by using a count. I don't know if it's considered an operator or a property. I'm not too sure in, in oh, excuse me, it's not count, it's length. And what we can do is we can use the print macro. And then I can type print greetings. And then I can I have to put an apostrophe S. So this name is kind of not, this isn't a very good thing because in, when Harlow, it adds the apostrophe S, so it's greetings, greetings. So I would do something like that in real English, but hey, this is, what can you do? Can't have it perfect. So I'm going to put print length. All right, let's see this in action. So we've created an, an array that says hello. I'm adding the, the greeting bonjour to the array, and we're storing it in the length. So how many elements are in this array? Well, let's see. You can see we have two elements, hello and bonjour. When working with arrays in Harlow, generally speaking, you're going to want to know if there's some if it's containing something. And we can use the the operator contain. So I can type print like so, and I'm going to print out the result of this. Greetings contains hello. So I'm I'm asking, I'm going to print out if the word if the word hello is within the array greetings. And the answer of course is yes, it is. You can see we reload and you can see the answer is true. So I can always encapsulate that within an if block later down the road. I can say type we can use the if macro if greetings contains true or excuse me contains hello and we could just add some little text to print out okay let's see this in action hello is in the array I'm going to create another variable and we'll just call this another greeting. I'm going to have it replace the first element. And I'm going to be using move and then I'm going to move another greeting and we'll say into the first element like so. So you can see we say another move another greeting into greetings is first and then I can just print out the first let's give this a run there it is so you can see we replace that first with hola and actually if we print this out you'll see the entire array now.
like so. Hola, bonjour. If you ever need to remove an element of the array, you're going to have to do a little bit of, you'd have to create a new array and import the elements that you want to use. So let's just say we want, want to create, a, we want to delete the first element. The way I do this is I create a new variable. And I'm going to create a new array. And now I'm going to populate it like so. So here we have set zero to bonjour. Evidently, I have a mistake. And here we have bon, just bonjour. We have gotten rid of hola by simply cutting up the array like so. Unfortunately, one of the most useful parts of arrays is being able to iterate through the entire elements and then do processing on each individual element. And that's not available in Harlow. You can use a macro called the live macro, which can basically call a function or call a certain a macro every certain amount of seconds that you desire. And I'll be covering these macros in another video, but that's more of a hack than basically getting your standard loop. So it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a disappointment for me, particularly when you have, you want to cycle through and print and customize exactly how things would appear. Ideally, I would have loved to have used an array and stored data maps that would have each of objects information in them. Then what would happen as the user would pick up items, they would then add them, we would add them to the array. And then when they drop them, we would get rid of them. And when the user wanted to click say inventory, I could cycle through all the data maps and print out all those fields that were necessary. Unfortunately, we can't do that here. I'm hoping that changes in the future, but it's somewhat limiting. Now that you have an idea of how arrays work, let's see them in action. In this example, we're going to take arrays and we're going to get rid of this is carried property and we're going to create an, an inventory array. So first I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to create a new variable. Next, I'm going to delete the is carried field here. So now when a user adds an inventory, we're just going to add the name of the object into the array and we'll check to see if they have it when we check when we do our checks. It's a little more verbose than the previous version, but you'll get to see how everything works. So here's our first passage, and we're going to check here. We're checking if badge is carried is false. Since we're going to be storing the name of the object, which is badge, we're going to do another check now. And this is another problem with arrays. You'll see just a moment. Unfortunately, with, and this I shouldn't say is an array problem, it's more of a twine problem. We're using this contains operator and we're checking to see if, if it has, the inventory has the name badge. We're not interested if the inventory has the badge in it. We are interested if it doesn't have the badge in it. And there's no way to indicate a inverse, inverse check. So in this case, we have contains I tried doing some tests, say if inventory not contains or inventory contains not, and neither of these work. So hopefully they'll add some sort of fix or feature like that in the future. But for now, we're going to do a little hack. We're going to put an empty macro here, an empty hook, I should say, and then we're going to add in the else hook. I realized I didn't cover else in, my, in the decision-making video, 
you when the if goes, the if will do this logic. And of course, if it doesn't work, it will then do this logic here. And here we have the tablet, so we need to change this also. I'm just going to add some space. This is going to add some space in our story, but I'm just giving some space just so that it makes it easier to read. Okay, I think I have this correct, but it may not work. We'll see. Let's give it a run. We're going to open your eyes. We're going to roll out of bed. So here we have your badge rest against the console, and we have some errors here in your station tablet grows. So these are working. And what happens if we try to take the badge? Okay, so we put the badge in your pocket. So it's still not working here. Actually, this probably is working. What we're doing here is we're, we're correctly going through all the states, and this looks like we have an extra bracket here, but we're not setting it. So let's set that now in the, into the array. All right, that should solve it. Open your eyes, roll out of bed. We'll take the badge. And it's not working. We'll continue to debug this. This is part of development, but you can see the badge here that is gone. Let's check the tablet. I'm guessing this tablet's gone too. So we just need to fix these. Okay, I'm not too sure exactly what was going on. I think it was the way how I was ordering my if and else macros. But as you can see here, we'll break this down one line at a time. We have if contains badge, and then we don't do anything because again, there's no not condition. We, we don't have the ability to say if the inventory does not contain the badge, do this. So we put an else here, and then we print out the badge. And same here if inventory contains tablet. Same thing down here, if inventory contains badge, and so forth. You can see when we take the badge, we have to add it to the inventory. And we do that by using the add syntax, which I showed you earlier. Okay, let's see this finally in action. You may look at this and you're probably thinking, well, it's probably easier to do the other way that we set it up. And I'd agree with you, this way is a little bit clunky. Let's open our eyes, roll out of bed in here. We'd have to fix the spacing and so forth, but that's another issue. And we're going to take the badge. Well, first, let's see what the badge says. This is something I tried to comment out, which means just to make this disappear. But evidently, I didn't. So we have that badge description. We take the badge. And you can see now it's gone. So that's just an alternative way of working with our current setup. To be honest with you, I'll probably switch it back to the old setup. Again, this isn't exactly easy to read. It provides a lot more code, code, excuse me. And as you can see, the more code you get when working with Twine, the more the harder it is to read. And you want to make your stories easy to read. So if something goes wrong, you'll know exactly how to fix it.